Good morning, New Hope Hawaii Kai. How are you all doing today? We are so glad you joined us for church this morning. At this time, we're going to welcome in the presence of our King Jesus. So I want you all to rise to your feet or even sit on your couch or lay on your floor. Do what you got to do and get in the presence of Jesus Christ this morning. Welcome to church, New Hope Hawaii Kai.
presence. Lord, right where we are. Right where we are, Lord. Whether it be in our living room, our kitchen, in our car. Standing in the grocery store, Father, would you let us become more aware of what you're doing and what you're saying. Lord, how you see the circumstances going on around us. Let us see with your eyes. Let us see what you are doing, Lord God. Lord, I am asking that you would make your bride aware of your presence, aware of your plan. This is the cry of our hearts, Lord Jesus. We trust you, Father. We trust that you are in control. You're in control of our lives, of our marriages, our circumstances, our finances, our jobs, this nation. You are in control, Lord. Let us not forget that.
that's so true, church? There's no one like our God. No one besides our God. You know, if you're like me, you, maybe you're, you're getting a bit of fatigue in this COVID season. Like, how much longer do we have to do this thing? You know, I don't know. I don't know why I'm forced to face things that I haven't faced for years in this season. I don't know why we can't meet at Kaiser like we're so used to doing in the past yet. But what I do know is this. That in this season, God is healing people physically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally. There's so much happening, church. And if we turn our eyes to him, because there's no one besides him. There's no, no riot, no pandemic, nothing that can overcome the power of Jesus. So guys, we got to testify to what he's doing in this season. I've seen a baby who had open heart surgery three weeks ago at the beach the other day. Only God can do that. I've seen fathers and mothers playing with their kids, surfing, just doing regular stuff. It's so simple, yet we make it so hard. So I just encourage you, church. Let's focus on God who, who always is and is, is to come. Let's take our eyes off the world and just focus on God. You guys just close your eyes with me for a minute and focus on the Lord. Lord, you are wonderful. You are mighty, Lord. There's none like you, Jesus. Lord, we just repent of focusing on the world and the, the what ifs and the why nots. And we, we just turn our eyes to you, Lord. Father God, however much longer we're in this season, we want to focus on you, Lord. Lord, we just love you. We're so humbled by your grace for us in giving us this pause. This time to reflect, this time to address issues and, and, and work through things. Lord, we lay our wills down and we submit to yours. And in Jesus' name we all said, amen. Amen, church. Well, hey, hug whoever's there with you in your living room. Give them a big kiss. And tell them welcome to New Hope Hawaii Kai. Update. Aloha, New Hope, Hawaii Kai. Pastor Pat here, just checking in and giving some updates about gathering and things like that. So when are we going to regather? Hey, and I am anxious to regather too. We are still waiting on the DOE and Kaiser for a concrete date as to when we can regather at Kaiser. We've been given some tentative dates, some kind of soft cement kind of information. And so I've been a little reluctant to kind of throw out some dates because I don't want to retract them. So we're hoping in July that we'll be able to, but as soon as we get a concrete date, we will let you know and we will be so excited to explain a little bit of our process of regathering. We've been doing a lot of work on the on the other side of this conversation as to some other possible locations for regathering. What other options are there? Thank you so much just for your grace and your flexibility. Hey, we're in this together and we just so appreciate that the church keeps on going. We are not closed. We are still open and God is still moving. There is good news in terms of gathering together, meaning, you know, groups of 10 people or less, you can absolutely feel comfortable gathering based on our CDC and state guidelines. Hey, we just want to encourage you. If you're in a small group of 10 or less, feel free to gather. We have guidelines that we have on our website, on the service update card on our website that you can find. And you know, guidelines like there's enough space for everybody to distance, that you're washing your hands, if you're not feeling well, that
that you don't attend. And if you're in a small group that, that's 10 or more, you can still gather. We just wanna make sure again that we have enough space that we maybe get creative about how you gather. We do have virtual options. All of those guidelines you can find on our website, newhopehk.org. Make sure you check them out in our service and gathering updates card. Hey, something else I'm super excited about this weekend is we're talking spiritual gifts. We're gonna learn how God has enabled us, empowered us with supernatural gifts to be witnesses to him wherever we go. Neighbors, workplaces, the grocery store, in our own families. God has given us gifts, so let's learn how to use them. We will see you at 8 and 10 a.m. on Sunday. Thank you so much, New Hope Hawaii Kai. We love you, and we'll see you soon. Aloha, New Hope Hawaii Kai. Man, fam, we are so glad you're joining us today. And uh, wherever you're joining us from, I know we have a lot of visitors that come and join us online. Let us know where you're visiting from. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to connect with you in the chat. Blow that chat up, man. We'd love to hear from you and just how God is moving in your life in this season. We are in a crazy season of life. And man, we just need each other and we need Jesus more than ever. Come Come on, somebody say amen. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so we are continuing our series in the Holy Spirit. I hope you've been encouraged. We are going for it because this has been such a timely series for us as we're really leaning in to dependency on God. You know, we're in a season where uh, a lot of the ways that we would be able to do things on our own strength and in our own capacity, we really can't. We have to lean into Jesus in brand new ways. And so we're going to talk about gifts, gifts. That's right. Spiritual gifts, gifts from the Holy Spirit. You know, I got a gift. I got this shirt this week as a Father's Day gift. Buy them. It was beautiful. It makes me, it actually, it, it helps accentuate the fact that my forehead is sunburned right now. And I, I just want to say it up front because I know someone's watching is like, man, look at the size of that man's burnt forehead. So I just want to point it out so we can all acknowledge it and then we could just move on anyway. So we're talking gifts and we're talking about the ways that God blesses us in supernatural ways. I mean, uh, we're going to talk about uh, charismatic gifts. That's right, charismatic. Now, don't get scared. The word is not a scary word. Charismatic, charismata, it just means gift. It means grace. It means favor. It means blessing. That's all it means. But I know that can be challenging sometimes because uh, when, it's, when we come to gifts, when we talk about words like charismatic, sometimes those words come with loaded experiences. Like we have people that ask uh, me and, and people at our church, like, are you guys a charismatic church? And my answer is always, well, yeah, we're a charismatic church. We believe in all of the gifts that God gives us to use for his purpose, but it may not be the same way that maybe someone has experienced it. I mean, I came from a very charismatic church. I mean, like a charismatic church. I mean, we had, like, in the middle of worship service, some uncle was jumping up and just prophesying and interrupting the whole thing. I had, I remember Auntie So-and-so was just on the floor just weeping. For, I don't even know why. I was 15 years old. I had no idea what was going on. But you know what? I mean, as much as I didn't know then, what I know now is these the people that I grew up with in that charismatic church, in wanting to express the gifts of God, the gifts that God has given them, man, they were the most loving people. They were the most uh, uh, expressive people. And it really marked me as such a young age to want to say, man, I want to burn like that in passion for God as, for as long as I'm breathing on this earth. And I think when we talk about spiritual gifts. What we don't want to do is make spiritual gifts the, uh, another idol in our life, like they are the thing. No, no, no. Spiritual gifts are given as gifts to us so that we can experience more of God and we can do the work that he's called us to do. Remember Acts 1.8 when he says, look, you will receive power 
when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses telling people about me, that's Jesus, everywhere you go. Now they're talking Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. We're talking Hawaii Kai, maybe Juan Manalo, maybe Kaimuki, maybe Aina Haina. Look, wherever God is going to take us, we're empowered by his spirit to bring the good news of Jesus. And so, but what I want to talk about a little bit is the other gifts that God gives. Before we get to the spiritual gifts, I want to talk about two other gifts that God gives us. And this is the first one, God's gift, the gift of eternal life. And I want to, I want to mention that as a foundational point for us because, look, family, if we don't get the gift of eternal life, the conversation about spiritual gifts doesn't really matter. Like if we don't get that Jesus is the son of God, that he lived a perfect life, died on that cross for your sin and my sin. And, and that is a, that's an invitation for you and I to receive the good news that we're no longer separated from God. And if we miss that, well, it doesn't really matter what gifts we get or what gifts we have. The wages of sin is death. That's what Romans 6 tells us. But the gift, the free gift, somebody say gift, of God is eternal life through Jesus our Lord. If you want the gift, you got to pay the price though. And what's the price? Well, it's a high price. It's death. <laughs> I know, it's actually good news because, well, Jesus said if you want to gain your life, you got to lose your life. Here's the amazing reality of Jesus is that he paid that price for you and me. He already paid for it. He paid it so that we wouldn't have to. And he's offered it to us as a gift. Ephesians says it like this, God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for it. It's a gift from God. Now, grace matters in all of this, which again, grace in the Greek, charis, it matters because it's not something that you can earn. Your salvation, your place in God's heart is not something you could earn to get, and it isn't something you can earn to keep. It's something that we, he gives freely and that we receive. I want to encourage you, if you're watching this right now and you have yet to receive the gift, like if you were to close your eyes and your life on this planet would be done, the question of where would you spend eternity? Well, Jesus is the answer to the question of our soul. He wants to spend it with you. There's another gift, and, and it's these, it's, it's this, I'm sorry, it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now in Acts 1, Jesus is talking. While he's eating with his disciples, he commands them, don't leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift that he promised. As I told you before, John the Baptist baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Baptized with the Holy Spirit. Charis Mata charismatic, free gift, blessing, favor, the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's not an it. It's not a thing. He's God. And he wants to grow in an intimate relationship with you and I. And Jesus said that he was a gift. So let's treat him that way. Maybe some of us grew up in maybe Christian experiences where that was a really kind of a scary conversation or there's a lot of fear or maybe even some painful experiences there. Look, but no matter who may have misused their gift, no matter who may have misused their position or influence, I want to encourage you. Jesus laid his life down as a servant so that you and I could know the heart of the Father and the gift of the Holy Spirit, the comforter. He wants to know you. And actually, our soul wants to know him. So that's the second gift. Here's the third gift that we're going to spend time unpacking today, and it's this. It's spiritual gifts. 
1 Corinthians 12, 1. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities, the spiritual gifts, I don't want you to misunderstand this. Paul is saying to this group of Corinthians, I want you to understand the value and the purpose of spiritual gifts. Now, some believe that the gifts, the charismatic gifts that we see in the New Testament, that we see operating in the book of Acts, has ceased with the death of the apostles. And uh, there's a lot of people in the body of Christ that actually believe that. They're called, they, they maintain a cessationist position, meaning the gifts ceased. They cessated. That's not the right word. But we actually believe that the gifts that God has given, that gifts that we read about in the New Testament, that they are for us today. We believe that gifts of healing operate today. The gifts of prophecy operate today. The gifts of encouragement and, and leadership, all of those are living, breathing, and part of our Christian experience today. Now, most aren't all more necessarily turned off by all the gifts. There's something like 27 gifts that are listed in the New Testament. They're usually just put off by a handful of them. You start saying things like prophecy or the gift of tongues, and people are like, I don't know about that. Look, here is the purpose of any and every gift that has been given to us, and it's this. We don't need to be afraid because of this. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. That's the purpose, so that we can help each other. So many aren't turned off by the gifts themselves, but they're maybe turned off by the packaging that those gifts came in. Maybe they're turned off because people misused or they focused on one thing more than another and somehow they lost the purpose, which was to focus on the love of Jesus and to help each other. Now, the ESV and the NIV version, they will say that the gifts are for the common good. They're for building up the body, not just creating super holy superheroes in church. Now, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, was, there was only a few people that had this presence, that had this ability to engage with these gifts, in the Holy Spirit, and that was the priests. But at Pentecost, and this is what we talked about a couple weeks ago, at Pentecost, Jesus blew the roof off of everything, man. Like, it was all available now. No barriers existed between people and Jesus, between uh, uh, Gentiles and even the closest place to God's heart. And the Holy Spirit came in. And he made an entirely new community by his presence. You know what's so unique about the expression of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament? Is that every other gift we can see in the New Testament, we also see in the Old Testament. Except the one unique one is the gift of tongues. Every single gift is used for the common good of the body of Jesus. Let's not be afraid of them. And while we won't be able to unpack every single gift in this message, what I want to encourage you is get into the Word of God. Talk with your small groups. Talk with people that you trust, who know God's Word, have experience, and see the fruit of Jesus operating through the spiritual gifts. You know, later as the first century church began to grow, then all of a sudden things started getting a little bit more professional. They started getting professionalizing clergy. The pros now are, are doing the work, and then they had the laity, and they were the ones kind of on the bench. And then a couple hundred years after that, then you have the Protestant Reformation that was like, no, 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 we're not doing that. And that's what, like the big language around that was the priesthood of all believers. It was like the church was once again coming back to the reality that everyone has access to God's word. Everyone should have access to the power of God's spirit and to his gifts. One of our values, and it's a biblical value, is that we believe that God gives his children gifts. And we build and we encourage and we do kingdom work based on all of the variety of gifts that we have in the community that we're a part of. It's called doing church as a team. Look, 
one pastor said it like this. I like the way that he defined a spiritual gift. He said a spiritual gift is a special, supernatural, supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together we can advance his purposes in the world. Now I want to unpack that a little bit. Number one, spiritual gift is a supernatural ability. It's not just a natural skill. It's something that's empowered by God. Secondly, that whole together part, that it's done in unity, that these supernatural abilities aren't done in isolation so that we can build up our own egos or our own agenda. They have to be done in the unity of the body of of Christ. New Testament has that language all over it. And lastly, it's for his purpose and not mine. I don't want to use his gifts to try and build my kingdom. My kingdom doesn't matter. It's Jesus' kingdom. It's the purpose of God on the planet. That's why in New Hope, that's why what we want to do is help people in their next steps to understanding this process. Because it's a lifelong process. It's actually called discipleship. This is what we grow in. It's how we learn to experience more of God in our lives. So let's talk about understanding the spiritual gifts a little bit. Number one, discover the gifts that God has for you. Now, spiritual gift, getting all jumbled up in here, a spiritual gift is not just your natural talent. It's not like you go and you take the Myers-Briggs or you take the Strengths Finder and then you've got it. No, no, no. A spiritual gift is a divinely inspired, empowered gift. Even if it's building off of a natural capacity, it's operating in that gift in a way that you couldn't do except for God's presence. He divinely enables us. Romans says that in his grace, his charis, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God's given you the ability to prophesy, to speak out with as much faith as God has given you, he says to do it. Later in that verse, he says, man, if you serve, then serve well. If you've got mercy, then mercy it up, man. If you got leadership, then lead, bro. Like, use what he's given you. Go beyond your natural capacity and surrender your whole life to the leadership of Jesus so that he can do something with you that you couldn't do by yourself. This is the best part because God actually enjoys When we lead from that place, when we discover our gifts. So like, I remember when I was 18, look, I've always had an ability to just like blah, blah, blah and talk and use words and try and get my way out of things and pretend like I'm charming, but not really. (laughs) You can talk to all of my teachers in like middle school and high school. I was always trying to get out of things or, you know, whatever. And and that's a natural ability. But I remember when I, I found Jesus at 16, that changed my entire life. And I remember I was preaching the gospel on the street in a, a small town in Illinois. I, I was preparing for a mission trip. And I remember I had shared the gospel before. But something happened where I actually, it's like I sensed the very presence of God just speaking through me. I had said these words before, but I never said them like this. I had answered questions and had conversations before about Jesus, but I had never had it in this way. And actually, it was that night a number of those young people that I was talking to ended up coming to know Jesus. I remember going away from that moment just thinking, I want to do this forever. Like, this is all I want to do. It was like some part of me came alive in a way that wasn't alive before. I discovered a spiritual gift. And I wanted to spend the rest of my life developing and and saying, man, God, how can you use that more? Look, Psalm 139 says it like this. You made all of the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book and every moment laid out before a single day had passed. Think about that. Inmost being. Inmost being. 
Like the in the most the most vulnerable, like the the youest part of you. That's what God knows. That's the part that makes you want to come alive. But if I were to ask the question, what makes you come alive? Could you answer it? You know, I think that a lot of people can't. I think a lot of people are uh, maybe are, are really good at their vocation, but when it comes to knowing the one who knit their inmost being together, that's where we come alive. That's what gives our vocation any level of meaning at all. Could you answer that question? Does God know? Do you know that? for sure? Do you know it in your knower that God knows your inmost being? That he made you? That he designed you specifically? You know, we have a class uh, at our church and it's called design because we believe that God has designed everyone in a, partic- in a specific way. And I want to tell you right now, hey, we're not meeting in person currently, but if you, like, If you want to know how do I figure that out, what gifts do I have, how do I know how God made me, hey, look, in the chat right now, just let us know, or even click that live prayer button, and when you do, one of our hosts will connect with you and just say, look, I want to know how I can understand, how I can discover my spiritual gifts. We'd love to follow up with you. Okay, so now what I want to do is I, w- I want to, and we've talked about discovering God's gifts. Now, secondly, develop those gifts. Develop the gifts that God has given us. Gifts change and mature as we do. Like when I started sharing, uh, you know, preaching and, and doing that, that, I preached in one way at 18. I had really, really long hair and, and I was, I did it in a certain way and maybe I was louder. I don't know if I ever changed the loud part. I don't really know. But part of those gifts changed over time. And in the context, too, sometimes I was on the street talking to people. A lot of times then, as I grew and I stepped into different roles, I was sharing the gospel in a lot of different ways, at churches or at different groups and Bible studies. Look, you grow and mature in faith, and so will your gifts. Just because you and I started doing, doing something one way doesn't mean that that's what we're going to finish doing at the end of our life. Corinthians says, let love be your highest goal. That's the goal. But you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, no. He went and he said it. He said it, man. He said the prophecy thing. Thought he was going to leave it alone. Now he's going to get weird. Now I'm not going to get weird. Look, why would Paul say that? Maybe I will get weird. I don't know, okay? Okay. But why would he say it? I I think we are missing the value of prophecy in this. The purpose of prophecy is the goal of love. It's the edification or the building up. It's the exhortation or the challenging of one another. And it's for the comfort of people. Can I, I just want to tell you that I think our world needs a little bit more of that. I think there's a lot of tearing down. I think there's a lot of division. I think there's not a lot of comfort. There's a lot of pain. And I think Paul is speaking into something in the Corinthian church that's just as relevant for us today. That moments where we sense the presence of the God of God to speak to us, a word of encouragement, a word of challenge, a word of comfort, man, that just might be one of the most needed things that we have in this season covet the gifts he says look if you're watching this right now and you're like man there's just really no way that god would use me and and i've been maybe i've distanced myself from god for a long long time i want you to know bible also says that the gifts and callings of god are irrevocable that you have never strayed too far so that god can't actually reach where you are. Actually, God is probably closer to you than you would even believe. I want you to know that even if you're in the midst, if, you're, if your life is a storybook and you, you added to your book a bunch of crazy chapters because you lived all wild and did some stuff, look, I just don't think that God's freaked out about that. I don't think Jesus is like, I can't believe he did it. No, no, no. I think Jesus has the final say over your life and my life. If we would surrender it to him, 
I think we would be amazed at the chapter that he would write. I want to encourage you. I want to exhort you. (laughs) I want to comfort you. You are not too far from the arm and the embrace of God. Look, this isn't even in my notes. And some of us are going to watch this days after this is actually recorded. But I feel like someone needs to hear this. That Jesus sees you. And he hears you when no one else has. He validates your existence because he has known you since before you were even in your mother's womb. And he knit you together. You are not an accident. And I hope that if you're listening to this, that today you would take that step if you haven't before and receive that gift, that eternal life gift by making Jesus the center of your life. This is why I remind you, Paul is encouraging a young man, a young leader in 2 Timothy, fan into flame. The spiritual gift that God gave you when I laid my hands on you. Discover your gifts, but develop them. Gifts like anything else, we receive them, but they don't just come fully matured and developed all the time. So we need to do the work of fanning the flame, of learning how to use them. Many of us have had the experience of a a leader, a person, a friend, someone in our family that used a gift in an immature or an unhealthy way. We have to learn how to submit those things to Jesus and to develop that gift into maturity so that we can be the witnesses to God's love that he's designed us to be. Then we can be encouraged to do this. To use the gifts he's given us. Use them. Got to use those gifts. Look, if you don't know Jesus, boom, discover who Jesus is. I mean, he he is such good news, family. He is such good news. The son of God that died on a cross for you and for me. And after this message is coming to a close, we're going to give you the opportunity in wherever you are watching us from to make Jesus the Lord of your life. That is such a value. Look, if you know Jesus, we can summarize your life and my life in this. Use everything that is you for God's glory. Use everything that is in you to give God glory and to show others his love. That's it. Life gets real, real simple when we see it through the gospel lens. (laughs) Now, this is challenging, though, in our time because using gifts has changed. You know, the way we did church for a long time, like whenever I have friends and family visit, our church in New Hope, Hawaii, Kai, always, always, without a doubt, they talk plate lunch. Bro, you do that. Well, that plate lunch, man, so good. How, well, like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, dude, it, it, they just, and it's not just like you threw some food on the thing and just blah, slopped it on the plate. I mean, you got so much aloha and there's auntie and uncle in there and, and, and they're just sharing so much love and life and people are talking story and, and all the time, man, plate lunch. But hey, We can't do hospitality like that right now. But does that mean that those of us with a gift of hospitality cannot be supernaturally empowered to use that in a completely different way? Not at all, man. I wonder how many of our neighbors, how many of our neighbors could use with some hospitality, some plate lunch right from your home? My goodness. You know, the way that we shared the gospel how we reach friends and family. Look, the way that we use our gifts can change over time. One of the ways that I'm so amazed at what's been going on is we had a church member before, like like right before all of the stay-at-home orders were happening, come to us and say, look, I think we need to be prepared and we need to have like some type of a way to assess needs in our community so that we can meet them. And that became our Kokua Center. 
Look, I'd love to try and take all the credit for that, but I can't because there's smarter, cooler, more empowered people in our church than even me. And I love it because we have seen so many people get blessed by that Kokua Center. It's the way that God is using gifts in ways that we didn't think, we, we just weren't thinking before because we were doing it in a certain way. You know, that day that I was preaching the gospel in some small town in Illinois, I felt the presence of God. But you know when I feel God's presence? It's not just when I discovered my gift, but it's when I use it. Right, a few, a few, just a few minutes ago, in that moment, I felt the presence of God, and I believe that that was a divine moment. That wasn't just me. That was a moment of the Holy Spirit encouraging someone. Look, this isn't about me, Pat's message, our church, all these. Things. It's about Jesus, family. It's about Jesus. I felt the presence of God when I spoke at that camp, New Hope Waikai in 2012 when pastor jay was the youth pastor that was the camp i came my hair was all long and i, I my tattoos were all out and one of the, the bunch of the youth leaders thought i was just some random punk kid they were like man that guy really needs jesus and then i got up to preach <laughs> it was awesome okay it, man i felt the presence of god in that moment that's one of the reasons why i'm here i feel the presence of god every time i would get up on that stage, and we would share that gospel moment as a gathered community at Kaiser High School. And I feel the presence of God right now. I know I'm not with you physically, but I feel God's presence. And I hope you feel him too. I hope you know that the Holy Spirit is there comforting you. And I, I think, man, there's a lot of comfort that we need right now. God has given each of us a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Look, family, COVID, COVID may have changed so many things, but it can't stop us from using our gifts creatively. We're in a moment in history where as the church, the people, the church, the people, not the church, the building, we are asking new questions because of where we find ourselves. And we're asking similar questions that I bet the first century church asked. What do we do now? How do we navigate this? God, we need to depend on you like never before. We can't solve this in our own capacity. God, we need you. Give us understanding. God, how can we more authentically live out the power of the gospel in our time? God, use us in ways that make us look more like you. <laughs> now, what things, maybe this question you're asking, or what things were distracting me from simply doing what you asked me to do? Man, many of us, maybe it wasn't that we were doing bad things. We were just doing, we were good things, but it wasn't, the things that God asked us to do. It was like we were doing the wrong assignment. Well, maybe God is, is recalibrating some things in this season as difficult, as challenging as it has been. I think asking God, how do we use these gifts for your glory in a new way, in a fresh way? It's such an important conversation. Look, fam, new hope exists to help people know God. We want people to know God because without knowing God, the rest of the conversations really don't matter as much. We want people to know that there is a God of the universe that loves them so much who sent his only son Jesus to die on a cross and that whoever would believe on him would have everlasting life. We want, I want your eyes, the spiritual eyes that God has given you to be enlightened to that reality. That's what it talks about in Ephesians. And as we help people get to know God, we want them to get connected in community because we don't want those moments of understanding God to happen necessarily in total isolation. We actually can't live the fullness of the gospel out if we're in isolation. We need one another. And that's why our small groups and getting connected in different ways is so important even now. And as we get connected, then we walk this road of discipleship at New Hope. We just say, we just we want to grow deep. 
We don't want to stay at a surface level in our faith and in our maturity. We want to grow deep. We want to ask questions. Why do I think like I do? Why do I keep doing it, doing things that way? God, how can you use me differently? Where do I need to surrender more of my life to you so I look like that living sacrifice that Romans 12 talks about? We grow deep. We develop our gifts. We ask questions and we wrestle and we have challenging conversations. We grow deep. And we grow deep because we want to find purpose. That purpose is not just for our agenda. That purpose is for God's purpose and agenda. It's so that we would be able to say, as I know God, as I'm connected in community, as I'm growing deep, and as I'm finding my design and my purpose, my gifts, I was made for this moment. I was made for this. Family, that's what we want to do at New Hope. That's what we want to encourage your walk with Jesus to look like. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. It's for his glory, fam. It's not for ours. Hey, look, our worship team's gonna come up now. We're gonna wrap up our service, and then we're gonna close with a song of worship. But right now, if you don't know Jesus, we've probably said the basics of the gospel message several times, even in this short service. But Jesus died for you and me on that cross. And he did it because we couldn't pay the price in order to get the gift of eternal life. Our sins separated us from him. And the only solution was the sacrifice of God's own son. And he paid it freely. And if you and I say, you know what? That's what I want. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead three days later. I believe he'll fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I can live the abundant life. Family, maybe you just need to pray that prayer right now. And with all of that being said, you can just say, Jesus, that's what I want. Jesus, that's what I want. I want you. I don't want to do things in my capacity anymore. I need you. And if that's you, if you said yes to Jesus right now, if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life in a way that you have never done before, we want to know about it. There's a little button that's going to come up. It says, I committed my life to Jesus. I want you to click on that button right now. Don't hesitate. Click on that and let us know how we can connect with you because we want to walk with you in your next steps in faith. And maybe you just, you've been walking with Jesus, but you haven't been fanning the flame, that passion, that fire for God's gifts and that and God's growing in your life. And I just want to pray for you. Father, I just pray for every person that is feeling like their flame is kind of flickering down, Lord. It's just kind of going to fading a fading ember. Holy Spirit, I pray you would blow a wind of holy fire. Consume everything that is in the way between us and you. Ignite, awaken people to passionate living for Jesus right now. Maybe you need to do that right now. Maybe as we worship and we close our service, maybe you're going to be just saying, God, I just want you to get that out of my life. Get that out of my heart. Get that out of, out of my thoughts, God. I, I just want to get closer to you. And we're praying for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, family. It is a good day today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for letting me use my gift and, and tuning in as you have. We love you so, so much. And we're going to see you soon. But as we close our service, we want to close in worship. Look, the chat's going to be open. We're going to worship, though. And wherever you are, on your knees, on your face, on your couch, in your bed, in your car, outside, I want you to worship. Let's use those gifts, New Hope. Let's give God glory. God bless you.